Hi, this is Emery Zanzel, and I want to welcome you to day four of the five day business building challenge for professional caregivers. And I am super excited to invite my collab to introduce you to my collaborator today, Anna Empey. Hi, how's it going? Happy to be here. Thanks so much, Emery. You're welcome. And Anna is in is talking us teaching us today actually a lot about websites and branding. So that's our topic for today. And so if you are um, watching this and you want to be able to see your um, comments so we know who's commenting on the post, just go to StreamYard a dot com slash Facebook and give them permission so that we can see who is talking to us. So um, let's begin. Um, first of all, I want to welcome you back to day four. If you remember from yesterday, we talked about visibility and why it's important to fo focus our energy strategically in promoting ourselves. And actually, um, today is a continuation of that because when we are branding and we are having a great website where people can find our work, that is a way to promote ourselves as well. So if you haven't seen the three previous videos, I just want to tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Emery Zanzel, and I am a graduate of Yale Divinity School. Um, I'm a graduate of the Women's Leader in Leadership Institute from Hartford Seminar Seminary. I'm a, I'm an ordained minister in the Progressive UCC. I'm a clinically trained chaplain, a bereavement counselor, an adult development and training expert. And I used to have that position with Girl Scouts USA. And I also got a diversity training certificate way back in the 90s from Girl Scouts USA. Um, I'm the owner of Amory Zanzel Coach. I'm the owner of Purposeful Empowerment, and apparently I'm a serial entrepreneur as well. And one of the little facts about me that I like to share is that I've been a general contractor for three house renovations. It's something I really love to do. And in my last life, I was a hospice chaplain. So let's hear now about our lovely Anna Empey. So a little bit about me. Um, I grew up on an apple orchard. Uh, I and that that apple orchard was actually like a thousand acre apple orchard, so commercial apple orchard, not just like a hundred trees in the backyard. Uh, and it is important to my story because it it talks about how I go, and I'll I'll talk about that a little bit more here. I was born an entrepreneur. Um, I learned people skills and selling at farmers market. I've literally been selling things um, and sharing things since I was four or five years old, selling our fruit, particularly at the farmer's market. I was raised Mormon and I graduated from BYU in social cultural anthropology with a minor in communications. Um, I worked up the ladder in my career from a marketing assistant to a marketing director to a co-director with a lot of focus on health and wellness. Um, I volunteered hundreds of hours to grow nonprofits using the same business and marketing skills that I have now and have continued to develop um, I started Business Inspired Solutions, my current consulting business, in 2019 to bring processes and systems to help businesses with a mission to bring their dream and their vision into reality. And I've built a small team. You know, we currently have five people. We actually, we're onboarding another person this next week. So I know what that, what that experience is like. And I've also worked with a variety of service-based businesses and quite a few brick-and-mortar businesses. So lots of different experiences and just those are the most of the important pieces of me professionally there's a lot more to me than that but it's it's perfect that we're here right now to talk about the way we can support you with building your brand and building a website so anna what is branding yeah so branding i would say i see branding in three specific ways so a lot of people think branding is just like a logo or fonts and colors. And that is a really important part of branding, but there's those three components that you see here on the screen. There's visual branding, then there's going to be your business identity. That's gonna be uh, your core values, your mission, your vision, those components of what make you unique and who you are. Maybe that's your approach or the lens that you see the world. 
And then making sure you've got messaging to reflect who you are and why you do what you do. When you don't have those three components, then typically there's a gap or people don't connect with you in ways you expect or want them to connect with you. So those three components are super, super important in your way that you brand and express and share yourself. So when we're looking at visual branding, you can see one of my favorite things to do is to create mood boards. Um, I like to make sure that people, I know what kind of emotions and experiences that people have. We do that with colors, right? When you look at a beautiful sunset, that evokes totally different feelings than when you're seeing a car crash on the interstate, okay? Not to get drastic, but you see what I mean. So making sure you've got that cool mood board You'll see down here on the bottom here, there's this, those, that palette and that row of colors. So that comes from a, a software called coolers.co. We use that to help us create palettes and color schemes so we can see that. And then you want to make sure you've got a good solid logo. Now, a lot of people will use Canva for a logo, and that's okay when you're just starting. But in the long run, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend getting a professional logo done with a vector file. Now, what the heck is a vector file? A vector file is going to be a really crisp version of your logo so that you can do things like what I've got on my hat. You've got my logo right here. Or if I want to print it on print material, or if I want to, you know, take that logo application beyond digital, it's important you have something custom that represents you. And with Canva, you run the risk that someone else out there could have the exact same thing that you've created. So that might be something worth looking at if you're gonna you know, launch full scale deep into your business, depending on your goals and where you're going. In the next step in your business identity, kind of like what we talked about there, you wanna look at your core values because I personally believe that our core values determine why we do things and even how we do things and even what we do. For example, one of Anne Marie's core values is what? Community. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. And it makes sense to me that because that's one of Anne Marie's core values, she brings that into her business model, the way that she connects people, the way that she supports people. She's about connecting and bringing that community together. It's, it's about something greater than herself. That determined why she does it and even how she delivers her coaching. So your core values can change the way your whole business operates. Now, your mission and your vision. I see your mission and your vision a little bit differently than a lot of people. For me, a mission is like getting in the car and I want to get clear, where am I going, right? And the vision part for me is why am I going there? If I'm not sure why I'm going where I'm supposed to go, I would drive in the car seamlessly wandering around for hours. Now, sometimes I do that to look at Christmas lights, but <laughs> I don't do that all the time. And that's an intentional getting in the car. And when you're starting a business, you want to make sure you're clear on where you're going and why you're going there. And if, and if you're clear on why other people should be part of that with you, then you can create something that I like to call a movement. And I'm not the only one who calls it that, but you can be up to something greater than yourself, which makes it easy for you to make that difference that you're already here to make because you're the one who wants to make that difference. Okay, the next thing that's super important is the way that you off make offers. Now, what's an offer? We're gonna get a little bit into that some more. But an offer primarily is the way that you sell your services in a way that works for you in a way that other people go, oh, that's what you mean oh, that's how I could make a difference. Um, and it's going to be how you set the expectations to deliver those services or to deliver that product. The last component that I look at inside of a business identity is your market position. So there's a few different ways that you can frame yourself. By frame, I mean, think of the framing of a house, right? The way you structure your business so that you can have leverage in the marketplace. One example is Tylenol and Advil. They're mm -hmm. always competing with each other, right? right? But really, you don't have to compete with your competitors. For most heart-centered business professionals uh, and those service providers, you're gonna fall into two categories. You're gonna fall into reframe the market, 
So that's helping people understand how you're unique. And in that position, you're going to talk about what you do and why you do it more than anything else. And that's where you got to make sure people understand why what you do and what you're up to matters to other people. The other position you could be in is called the game changer. Now, that's if you're doing something so revolutionary that nobody else has done it. Now, I'm not saying that that's not everyone, but there are some people who are doing things that have never been heard of or been done before. And in that position, you're literally carving the pathway and showing the way and teaching people a whole new way to do that. Now, I've worked with both companies and clients in both positions, but most of the people who are heart-centered, they're going to fall on that reframe the market. Well, it was interesting because when Anna, so Anna and I started working together, I hired Anna to build my first website. Um, and uh, one of the things is, is she did some market research out there about who was doing coming out coaching. And her partner, Caitlin, did the research. And Anna came to me and said, there's nobody in the marketplace doing this. There was at that point, there were no competitors for people helping people coming out later in life. There just wasn't anybody doing that. And so um, I never thought of it as a game changer before, <laughs> but apparently it was. And I'm super proud of that. I was one of the first people that started this sort of revolution of other people helping people coming out later in life. Absolutely. And I think, you know, maybe other people were doing it, but inside the research, we could not find people who were being open and transparent and marketing offers and services. And when that, marketing doesn't exist if you can't find it that is how you know you've got that game changer right and in that position it's super important that you have and you bring your level of confidence in what you have to deliver to a really high level right because you are the one who's doing something different you are the one that's bold enough to have the conversations and that's where i celebrate anyone who you know Anyone who's getting in business to make a difference for other people, I have to celebrate that because it's it takes courage. It's a little risky. And actually, it, it points to this next question mm -hmm. here on the screen. About you know, solopreneurs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're a solopreneur, is your business identity the same as your identity? Okay. Is, is it the exact same thing? Uh, let's talk about that. So really, it doesn't actually have to be. It's going to be a piece and a part of who you are, right? Those core values, those come from you. But it's actually something greater than yourself. Because really, Anne-Marie, I started my business so I could make a difference in the world and leave the world better than I found it. Mm -hmm. So what's funny is it was about me and not about me all at the exact same time. Right. So sure, I had the vision but it is not the same as my identity. And now I've got a small team and it makes sense why it can't be my identity because if it was just me, then I can get stuck in my head about what's happening in my life. But my business is actually greater than myself. Now, one of the reasons why I like to make sure even solopreneurs can see that distinction is that you're gonna be a lot more empowered to take the actions you need to take even when you've got things you're facing in your life, we all have to face those things. But when we can have that confidence in what we're up to, it can actually give us motivation. It can actually pull us forward to fulfill that purpose. So there's going to be pieces of you that are in that business identity. But it's important that you do create a business identity that is not collapsed with who you are. It's a part of you, but not all of you. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about messaging, that uh, the third component for branding. So when you're really looking at your messages, there's going to be particular words that you use, right? Uh, and there's going to be unique ways that you frame and see the world because you're you, you experience things a particular way. So it is important you get really clear. What's the unique way that you express what you're talking about? Right. That's why naming and calling the things in your business important. Right. Lotus group coaching, for example, mm -hmm. or the coming out and beyond podcast or the queer business success podcast. Right. Having those names come from you and that terminology 
and even the way that you deliver services. The other thing you do, you wanna make sure you're clear on your core values and how that translates into your offers. When you're looking at making an offer, you wanna make sure you explain why you are doing that offer. If I can be clear, yeah, I'm, I'm creating this coaching program or I provide these services because I care about kindness existing in the world. Or for example, one of my core values and one of the core values where we work is called win-win solutions. What that means is if it's not actually a win for you, it's not a win for me. So we do not do things that don't actually benefit one another. If it's not mutually beneficial, and it's not actually in alignment with what we're up to, we don't do it. Now, that, that does make me unique as a marketer. And the next thing is we want to have transparency on your why. Um, if we're not clear or deep enough on our why, it's hard for us to go and make that difference because everybody likes to know why. Yes, absolutely. So why does branding matter, Anna? Yeah, so if you look here, at that font, that branding, it it's important that you have some cohesiveness across that brand, okay? And it comes down to exactly what's on the screen here, that no like, and trust factor, right? So it's really important that you know yourself, you like yourself, and you trust yourself as an entrepreneur. And as a business person, you need to know who you are. You need to like what you do, and you need to trust that you can keep your word and deliver. If you don't have those things for yourself, how can other people know you, like you, or trust you? Now, that's the secret formula. A lot of people talk about know, like, and trust, but they don't really talk about how that works. It starts with here. It's an inside job a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why I love what Anne Marie is doing, making sure that you're getting that clarity and you're getting that, that know-how so you have this foundation in place. Because when you have it for yourself, and for your business, it's easy for you to now translate into that to, into your marketing and on your website so that other people can know you like you and trust you because those are the things that are important for someone if they want to purchase from you. Right. And that is, I think, one of the best things about purposeful empowerment is that, yes, we give you all the business things that you need to know, all the business, you know, how to brand, how to have a website, how to have visibility, how to have clarity, how to um, be comfortable with who you are in the marketplace. But also we really dig deep and do some of the emotional part. Um, a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, especially in the beginning, really struggle with imposter syndrome, which is if you struggle, which is when believing that you are not really who you say you are and you're fooling people. And if they found out the truth about you, they would not buy for you anymore. Everybody struggles with imposter syndrome. And I have found typically people who struggle with that with that and other areas of their life will struggle with it when they build a business. So we do some of the emotional pieces of, of owning a business and talk about those things too, because, you know, I always believe in the, the power of common humanity. And once you realize, Oh, everybody struggles with this, it cuts down the anxiety literally about 50%. Yeah. So, yeah. So Anna, where does branding need to be consistent? Yeah, I would say everywhere, yeah. everywhere. You so know, where, where is everywhere? <laughs> where's everywhere? Let's talk about it. Yeah. So we've got, you want to make sure you've got your logo variations, your colors and your fonts. You want to make sure that's set. Now you can use variations of your colors, but on your logo, you want to get pretty consistent. You don't want your logo to change, right? Uh, Nike will do some variations of their logo, but their logo looks pretty consistent. That's why we all recognize the Nike swoosh, right? Mm -hmm. We all know what that looks like when I say mm -hmm. that, right? Now, you want to keep your branding consistent on your social media platforms, in your email, newsletters, print materials, business cards, T-shirts, videos, inside your messaging, any written content. You want to make sure that messaging matches in your blogs, on your website, in your newsletters, on your social media posts, on your video scripts. And if you turn your pod, you know, podcast, your scripts into a podcast, pretty much anywhere you represent your business, you want to make sure that's represented. 
And kind of going back to your point about imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. it's really important that you build these things to align with what you're actually up to. Now, that's where a lot of marketing and branding professionals miss the mark. They hire someone to make them look really good. But then they're like, oh, my gosh, that doesn't actually match me. How can I have confidence in that? So making sure it's in alignment with you, who you actually are, because you are the one with this mission. You are the one that's here to make a difference. When it actually aligns with you, you will not create more imposter syndrome. You can actually have more confidence in just being authentically you and what you have to deliver. And that's why branding is so, so, so important. You know, that I think what, you know, a lot of times people think words like alignment and things like that are like these blue words, but that's what actually what Anna is talking about. A lot of times when I'm working one of, with one of my business coaching clients, I always ask them, like, if we write a statement, I says, does that feel true to you? Because if you're out of alignment with what you're supposed to be doing, or say, for example, you hire a big time marketing firm to design a logo and a website and all that stuff like that. And it's beautiful, but you look at it and you go, eh, that's not really me. <laughs> you know, it's it's something someone or you're not confident yet to be how they're representing you. So sometimes really working one-on-one with people and becoming very confident, but also very involved in in the sense of giving your own input to your building of your website so that um, it feels more true to you. Like Anna's built two websites for me now. Um, she's bought, built amoryzanzel.com and Purposeful Empowerment, which will be launching in, uh, in the new year, January 1st. Um, Anna's built too. And, and we really like this, you know, it's funny because the first time around, I sort of didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so, and I had trusted Anna a lot. Um, and this time around, I've trusted Anna a lot, but she also knows me a lot better now too. So when she has created the second pop website for me for purposeful empowerment, it really feels like me. And so when I look at the websites, I love my, I love the website Anna has done for amoryzanzel.com. If you have not seen it, go check it out. It's beautiful. And I love it because it is professional. It's comforting because the people who are coming to my uh, website are often really, really anxious. They don't know where to turn to. There's a ton of, we have so many resources on there. It's incredible. I mean, you could really spend a couple of days going through that website to see all the resources and it'll take you a couple of weeks to listen to all the podcasts. <laughs> well, so, I would say when you think of the word alignment too, I want you to think, does this match? Does this match my vision? Does this match my goals? Does this, uh, is this the path that actually will fulfill my mission and what I want to accomplish in reality? And, mm-hmm. and that's where branding needs to match. Right. And even like it, does this match what I actually want us how I actually want to serve people. And is this me doing what I want to do? A lot of times as business owners, we forget that we have the opportunity to to set the rules of the game that we play because we are the ones providing the services. Yes, we might have hoops or we might have regulations based on our industry that we have to meet, but we get to determine so many things of what that looks like. And sometimes that can be overwhelming, but I hope you can feel really empowered And then making sure that that is reflected out there in the world accurately is the most powerful type of branding and marketing. Well, let's talk about another part of branding, and that's websites. So let's Let's talk talk about about websites. (laughs) Okay, so the old way of websites, if you kind of think back, um, you know, early, mid 2000s, uh, I'm thinking like 2007, it was this build it, they're going to come. And a lot of times it would just sit there like, sit there like a printed brochure, okay? Mm-hmm. In the past, it was a high investment with a low return or low value in your business, okay? Uh, sometimes people will ignore it and let it sit there for months and months without updates. It doesn't typically rank for keywords. It doesn't actually build more trust or clarifies why to work with you. And SEO is easy, okay? Literally, you could keyword stuff, um, information about therapy with hamburgers okay and it would still rank okay there's a some funny horrible stories about 
SEO agencies that no longer list uh, exist. And that's why we have so many regulations around, around it now. Uh, the new way, you want to make sure it's more than a brochure. We make sure it contributes to your business goals. It needs to build trust. It needs to connect your email list. It's going to position you as an expert, and it's going to help you turn visitors into lead. It becomes a core part of your business model and where people come to know you, right? When you've got that hub of trust where your website is, it makes it easier because when somebody hops on a call with you, Amory, what's the experience now than, you know, way at the beginning when you didn't have one? Do they already know you a little bit? What is that kind of like? Oh, it's been really interesting. And in like th this year, really at the end of this year, the last six months is by the time people... Um, come on a call with me, they're already super primed to buy because they've gone through this experience of reading blog pieces, you know, investigating um, like all the podcasts I've been on. And then they listen to Coming Out and Beyond the first two seasons, especially because those are the seasons which we talk about coming out later in life exclusively. And so by the time they, and we also have a five, uh, 10 email automation sequence. So when they sign up for what to a free download, which is called um, Five Places to Start When You're Coming Out Later in Life, they sign up for that free download. I capture their email that, the address and then we add more value by giving them a 10 um, email automation, which Get, you know, it's all kinds of information for them. And so by the time that they get to the point of like making an appointment with me, they're wet, ready to buy. They're absolutely ready to buy because you've done the work and they've done the research themselves too. And what tends to happen is when you launch this website, the new way, it's going to have people, it's actually going to help you attract the people who actually want to work with you because you're finding with those keywords. Okay. You can also going to teach them and deliver those cl that clarity on how your services and products are unique. So that increases the trust. And then when they hop on, they actually already trust you a little bit more. Okay. Also, the new way of websites is that it evolves with you. Anne Marie's nowhere near where she was when she started. And I say that in the best way. No business is. For us to be successful as entrepreneurs and businesses, we've got to be able to evolve. And as we learn better, we do better, right? That's just how we are. So mm -hmm. having a website that can do that with you is, is great. Okay, so who knows the number one reason to own your own website? Amory, I think today it means you get a business book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to answer that for you. Um, you need a home. Uh, social media platforms, as we know, are incredibly volatile. They change the rules all the time. They change the algorithms all the time. They change their owners sometimes. And so you need a home for your business. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes... There are things that change and influence Google, but it's not going to change. It'll just ask you to refine and be better. It's mm -hmm. not going to limit your ability to have a place, right, mm -hmm. where you get a hold and stand and create who you are. It really says, hey, I'm here. Okay. A powerful website will absolutely level up that know, like, and trust. Okay. It's going to make sure that you are SEO optimized and you meet Google's criteria. Like I said, sometimes Google's criteria changes a little bit, but it's about actually making sure that we are showing and being our real selves. Uh, what's funny is I love that AI is such a you know, revolutionary thing, and Google wants to make sure that we're providing that value. More and more and more, it wants to make sure we're being valuable. So you know, not that you can't use AI as part of that, but making sure it matches and aligns with you is super important, more important than ever. And that leads me to the next point. It's actually going to authentically reflect who you are. Okay. It stays accurate. And then it's also built around the natural decision, decision making process. So it uses psychology to help people understand what they need to understand to make a decision to say yes or to say no. Okay. It's also going to influence and produce results. By results, I mean, you're going to actually get visitors. You're actually going to get signups. You're actually going to get leads. Now, inside of that system, there's specific processes and frameworks and approaches to conversations you absolutely need to have to make sure those things happen. But that's what a powerful website will do. 
Okay, it's also going to connect to your CRM and your email system. Okay, and it's also not going to disappear. Like, for example, you know, how many times, I mean, I'm not going to go doomsday, but it will stay there and be there for you no matter what other happenings. You know, software and technology is kind of volatile sometimes. Okay, mm -hmm. now for SEO, the secret to Google's algorithm, it's called eat. Let's eat. So, well, number one, they want to make sure that you have a good experience on the website. By experience, we're talking about your page times. Uh, we're talking about some other things as well. Does how how does the navigation work? Next is the expertise. Are you talking about things you're an expert in? Uh, the next one is authority. That's going to be related to do you have the little lock up in the corner? That's your SSL certificate. Okay, that's also going to be. Do other people link back to your content and are other people connecting back to who you are as being seen as somebody who is that expert in the topic? And then the next one is trustworthiness. Do you link back to other resources that you communicate and you learn things from? Uh, do you have, again, it's going to pull that SSL. Do you have that security certificate? If you're processing payments, do you have the right things in place to protect your customer's information? All those things are important, okay? Um, we'll go through these just a little bit more. So experience, that's also gonna be how fast is the site? Do the pages and the images load? Uh, the navigation, again, the content formatting, is it easy to read and is it mobile friendly? Okay, in about mm, 2015, 16, maybe it wasn't quite that long ago. It feels like that long ago. Google switched that if you did not have a mobile friendly site, you would not rank as well. So making sure you have a mobile optimized site so your content looks really good on mobile is super important. And I'll say this is absolutely true for most of my clients. 60 to 80 percent of their traffic is on a mobile device. OK, so we make sure that it looks good on mobile and on desktop. Absolutely. And I skipped a, a slide on Anna. So let's just go back a little bit and just go and talk about EEAT. Oh, we did talk about that. Oh, we did. I'm sorry. Yep. Nope. I you're thought. good. Okay. Nope, so you're good. Now we're going to go to expertise. Yep. <laughs> so now we'll go to expertise. It's perfect. So this is going to be, again, it's this content structure, but we're looking at, do you have pages and blogs and videos and images and headings? And how are you organizing the information? so that people can find what they're looking for. It's got to make sense um, because Google has things, these things and uh, Caitlin likes to call them spiders because in the training she took and it's called the World Wide Web, right? So these things are little bots and they literally just crawl the way that it's all connected. And then it's going to read that code back behind it to say, oh, yep, this is this information and this is this information. So there is that structure that's super important. Okay. Also, how useful is the content? Um, is this just the same content that everyone else is speaking about? Now, that's also why it's super important. You have confidence in how you're unique and your willingness to talk about the way that you see things and what you're offering in your business and how you do things different because it's useful when we're sharing that uniqueness. If it sounds like everything else that Google has seen, it's not going to rank very well. Okay, the next thing is, oh, go ahead, Emery, sorry. And that's also something to think about when you're using AI, because AI is taken from the experiences of others, right? You know, that's how it, and so when you're, when you're using AI for your business, it's also really super important to personalize it. Yeah, and absolutely, right? Like, actually, you know, I love using AI to help me come up with ideas yep. and brainstorm outlines and headings and what are the conversations I need to have? But I, you know, it, even in our business, we do not use AI to do the writing for us because we want it to match our clients' voices. And, you know, maybe that will change over time, but I really want to make sure it, it aligns, it matches, it really represents you. So I use it to do the heavier lifting. It's harder for me to brainstorm and come up with the idea than it is for me to write once I've got that outline. Mm -hmm. And that goes actually to the next one. Are you a topic expert? You know, do you have a page about this topic and a series of blog posts related to that too? You want to go pretty deep into the conversations, right? Coming out, that is a whole experience. 
right. starting a business. That is a whole experience. <laughs> Can I just write one page and hope that I rank for that keyword? No, they want to make sure you're a topic expert. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to this last point. You want to make sure you've got pillar pages. The pillar pages have about 2,000 to 3,000 words, blogs, 800 to 1,000. And you want to have five to 10 that link back to that pillar page. Then you want to have lead magnets, magnets that are resourceful, that capture people's information. And that's also how you know they're waving their hand saying, hey, I'm more interested in your services. And you're warming them up through that process. Okay, authority, backlinks, are other people linking to you? Okay, second, yeah, are you seen as an expert? Again, going back to the topics and structure. And then the third piece is, do you have relevant, helpful content? Not just a sales pitch or a funnel page. Selling and sharing is super important. And actually inside of Purposeful Empowerment, we go into your offer and how to sell and how to share a lot more deeply but it's important on your website, yes, you want to make sure you have an entry gateway point where they can access that and make that sale, but you want to make sure you have all that other information so that they can make that decision as well. Trust. Yep, back to that security on your site. Do you have a privacy policy, terms and conditions? Do you have a Google bus business listing and reviews? Now, I've got lots of people who are like, Anna, I serve a national audience. Perfect. You still need a Google business listing. You still need a place and you can set it that you don't serve um, locally. Uh, it will just let you have that listing. Okay. Also, you, are you getting reviews on Google, Yelp, and Facebook? And are you citing other experts? Are you linking back to other people that you're learning from? Okay. Now, authenticity, and it's really important that your website reflects who you are. Because when you say you're going to do these things or you say this is how you do these and you use those specific language in that specific word, when you say the same things, it feels similar. Then you pass their green flags. So, for example, I get on a call with Anne Marie and she says, yeah, Anna, uh, this is what it's called. Lotus Group Coaching or Purposeful Empowerment. Guess what? She doesn't call it something different. She calls it the same as she calls it on her website. That makes me go, okay, I'm in the right place with the right person talking about the right thing. And we don't think that it's just that all happens in a split second, right? Right. So, yeah, yeah we want to make sure we create as many green flags as possible for people. And the same is true if it hasn't been updated or if the language doesn't match. It's really important that we don't accidentally create more red or yellow flags. Okay. And that's why it's also important you have an about page so you set those expectations. Okay, now you do want to make sure that it's accurate and it's easy for you or your team to update it. Okay, now websites don't have to be complex. Now, if you're just starting, I definitely recommend if you're going to do it yourself, Squarespace is a great place to start. If you're going to write a ton of blogs, it's not where I would stay long term. And that's actually why we end up taking Anne Marie off of Squarespace. Um, but it's a great place to start, it's pretty user friendly. and if you don't want to do it yourself, you want to make sure that you get someone who's responsive to your needs because you shouldn't have to wait weeks for changes. Typically here with Business Inspired Solutions, you make that request and we're going to make those changes within two to three business days. We've got processes and systems to make sure that we've got those things. And if we're not clear on what you need, we make sure we schedule a call, we get on the same page, so that you can get that taken care of. And there's a lot of people in website design who are not like that. So mm -hmm. just, it's important you look around to find someone who's gonna be responsive to what you need. Okay, the other thing too is answer questions and give the power to the client to make the decision. Um, you know, it's funny cause I, I didn't live so much in this era but I have bought a few cars in my life. But how I know cars, buying cars used to be the way you had to go to the dealership to get all the details and all the information, right? As a kid, it was that way. But now looking back, that's not the way that you buy a car now. And that's because the people who we're selling to actually have the buying power. It used to be that the sellers had the power, but the people who are purchasing have that power. So Google absolutely loves it when you answer questions. 
Okay, experts are also going to listen to their audience and give new perspectives and thoughts and ideas that educate, empower, and provide resources to help their audience solve the problems and concerns. Okay, also, if you're going to be an expert in something, you will have opinions that other people don't like. That is okay. Mm -hmm. Please own it, share it. That actually adds to your authority. It doesn't make you, um, doesn't make you, less of an expert it actually adds to your expertise and it might take some courage or some boldness to say wait a second i'm not okay with that way that my industry does things I actually just did this on the last slide i'm not okay with parts of my industry that don't take care of people that's really mm -hmm. important to me that we do that so owning and sharing that in the questions and the answers is great now types of content you could do Business blogs, FAQs are a great way to provide value. And that can translate into other content that you share as well. Okay, now uh, uh, having that website set up, it's going to really influence people to take those actions and produce results. Like I said, visitors, signups, and leads. So you want to make sure it's connected to an email marketing system. Okay, it has a contact form and contact details at the bottom of every page. Now that is different. Um, it's funny, I was just talking to somebody who uh, builds layouts and they said, I don't know, I forgot that we always make sure there's a contact form on the bottom of every page. And it doesn't make sense to me why this other person doesn't have that. I said, well, they just don't see it the way that I see it. But we want to make it as easy and seamless as possible for people to get a hold of you. If they've got to search for it, they're going to click off before they'll search for it, okay? before they'll find it. You also want to make sure you've got powerful calls to action and buttons with direct intent. People sometimes don't know what the next step is unless you say, let's get started. Let's schedule that discovery call. If we don't have that clear, they don't know where to go from here. So you want to make sure you help them navigate and make it easy for, they, for them to go where they want to and to see you as the person to help them with their problem. When they see that you're the person who's helping them and guiding them and you're showing them the steps, then when they hop on that phone call with you, they're going to say, oh, wow, you actually can help me. Let's do this. That's great. Okay, some helpful tools and tech for websites. If you're working on SEO, SEMrush is a paid platform. Um, I'm not an affiliate with SEMrush, just what we use here at our agency. So it helps me know what are the keywords, what are the topics, what are the conversations I need to have. Okay, Google Trends is another great free, that one is a free tool. Google Analytics and Google Search Console, super important. Google searches with a keyword focus. Now that I mean, I type in things like uh, how to have a healthy lesbian relationship. Mm -hmm. Great, you're gonna be able to see other keywords and questions inside that search. So you can know what kind of conversations are people looking for that I can talk about. Okay. And then GT metrics for site speed. Okay. That's a free tool. You can use it as often as you want. Helps you kind of see where you're at. Okay. So what about funnels? <laughs> Ooh, this one's a fun. You want to know a secret? <laughs> are you sure you want to know the secret, Anne-Marie? Okay. I'll share it with you. Okay. What's the secret, anne -Marie? Okay, I'll share it with you. So that secret is, but you, but you before I tell it to you, you got to promise me that you won't go and crush <laughs> the bros out oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everything in marketing is a funnel. Okay, a fancy way of a funnel is a fancy way of saying the process people go through to make a decision. Now you're going to see the steps over here. Awareness. Do I even know that this is a problem? consideration. Oh, maybe this is a problem and maybe there's a solution. Decision. This is absolutely a problem and I've got to find a solution. And then that sale or offer and connecting with you. Okay. So if we come to the next one, so how does it all connect and work together? I'm going to show you here. So your core is your website. If you look back at that, know, like, and trust, you're inside your trust hub. A sale is going to be the entry point to access your core and their results. Your offer is where they decide to make a decision. Now, you might put your offer on social media or on your website. Hey, this is how we help you. These are the details. But that's where they're going to make that decision. 
Okay, your marketing is where they're going to gain awareness and consider their solution. This is where you've got to have that confidence and clarity so that you can be visible. If you don't have visibility, really hard and confidence to be visible, really hard for you to be successful in your marketing. Okay, so let's go look at a real life example. Okay, am I pulling that up right now? Yeah, <laughs> let's go for it. Okay, hold on one second. Perfect. Of course, there we go. And let me know what you want to see. Yeah, so let's go look at your Lotus Group coaching page. Okay. So this is my website. And so Lotus Group coaching page is right here. There we go. Now, what, what you're going to see is right here at the top of this page, We've got clarity on what this is. Now let's keep scrolling down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a welcome introduction. We're introducing what this is all about mm -hmm. and showing Anne Marie. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna keep on scrolling. And then you're gonna see the different options that are available mm -hmm. and what's, what's important there. Yeah, because, it, you know, typically people that come into my Lotus group coaching are people who may just have realized that they may not be straight. Um, a lot of the work is around divorcing because a lot of the people that I work with are going through um, deciding what's going to happen with their marriage. And so a lot of the work we do is in that. And then a lot of the people actually stay in Lotus group coaching. Um, they, um, you know, we typically my typical, the program is six months, but I have had people stay from anywhere from six months to two years and they just keep renewing and staying in the program to where they get to the point where they are on the other side of it. So Lotus Group Coaching takes people through that whole journey. And so as you can see here, there's a six, six month um, uh, coaching program. And it tells you a little bit about the coaching program. And then there's the discovery call to get started. So, Anna, do you have anything else to add about that? Yeah. So what you can see is that we went really in depth on this topic. We went really in depth on the needs that Anne-Marie's clients have. And mm -hmm. we also showing the people who are part of her, her program and support groups. We're showing some testimonials. And we're really expressing and giving people the information they need to make that decision. And that's what makes this really, really, really powerful. Right. And you, and the all important uh, sign up for the newsletter on the bottom page. OK, let me bring us back to the next back to our other screen. Perfect. Thank you. So when we're looking at uh, the next secret that's related to this conversation, that's going to be the slide. Mm -hmm. So we've got that clarity. Now, also, if you look at Amory Zanzel, it's going to meet the other criteria for EAT, you know, that we talked about. But the, the next secret, are you guys ready for another secret? <laughs> Marketing is a reflection of your brand identity and your offer when sometimes we get really stuck, what the heck is marketing? It's really just having that. So in the foundation work you do in Purposeful Empowerment, knowing what your value is, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and having the comfortable and being willing to be visible and authentically be visible, the more comfortable you are with that, the more successful you will be with what you're up to, the more successful you will be at making a difference. Absolutely. Okay, when your website aligns with your business identity and goes all the way up to your marketing, this creates a seamless process for your ideal client or customer to say yes. Now, what if people are saying no? <laughs> yeah, what if somebody says no? What if somebody is saying no? That tells me they may not be your ideal client. That mm -hmm. tells me that maybe they don't understand your offer. Or maybe they're not ready for what you have to offer yet. That doesn't mean you should stop offering it or change what you offer. Um, it's important that you take the time to really look 
with that person and have the conversation, well, how does it not meet your needs? If it's if it's someone you really care about, cool. But it's also important that you prove the concept with multiple people. If I changed my offer every time someone said no to me, Emery, I would not be successful. So yeah. I have to look with myself. What do I want to do? What can I do? What can I not do? Yeah, and I think that also too becomes also with money mindset too, because a lot of times when you're a new entrepreneur, you're really worried about lack. You know, you're really worried like, oh, if I say no to this, will I have another opportunity to make any more business? And um, and so when you become super comfortable with what you offer and someone says no, you're actually okay with it. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's fine. You know, when somebody says no to me, I, I say, you know, thank you so much for meeting with me. I really highly recommend the first two episodes, two first seasons of Coming Out and Beyond as you navigate this journey. And um, because first of all, there's, I, I really do believe in the work, work of the first two seasons of Coming Out and Beyond. Um, but I also know that still keeps them in my um, sphere. You know, that they right. still be pairing for me. And because they listened the first two seasons and maybe they listened to all four, they really, really get to know me. And sometimes it's a little disconcerting because I talk, you know, I, you know, after four seasons, I think we're probably up to about a hundred episodes now for coming out and beyond. You know, I share about my life, you know, bits and pieces, but if you're a consistent listener, you know, you know me a little bit. And so sometimes people will say things to me like, I'm like, how do you know that? And then I'm like, oh, they listen to the podcast. Oh, they listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's also why it's important. Like if 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 you have those resources and those things that help them through that decision making process, mm -hmm. it can change everything. Yeah. Um, I'm also gonna say if you're just getting started and you're not hundred percent sure what to offer, try it out a few times and refine mm -hmm. it as you go. That's okay too. And you're gonna realize oh my gosh, I did that this time and I'm going to keep my word and I never want to do that again. Or you're going to go, oh my gosh, that was the greatest thing ever. Let's do it again and again and again. So right. don't be afraid to try new things and experiment. Absolutely. And so um, ironically, Anna and I have been in business. We've been collaborating on this business for about five months now, I think about six months ago, we started. And guess what, we've changed our offer. Because um, there were a couple of things as I have been working with other people that I liked, and some things I didn't like. And so Anna and I met earlier this week. And we said, Okay, let's do a new offer for purposeful empowerment. And so I'm really, really excited to share that with you right now. So let me share the screen. And here we go. So um, this is um, our offer. And both Anna and I are the best part about this offer is you get more of the fabulous Anna and Faye in it. Um, <laughs> because Anna and I, you know, I think the best part about our working relationship is that we bring different strengths to this business collaboration. Um, we just, both of us have different strengths. And although Aunt Anna also has a, a, you know, she, we have different strengths, but also our, our lesser strengths are still really strong and they support each other as well. So Anna is a great person to talk to about some of the emotional parts of the business. Um, I understand some of the more technical areas of the business. Like, you know, it's so funny. I put this page together like um, the last couple of days and, and like, I just marvel like at how far I've come <laughs> since I first started to do this work because I wouldn't have been able to do this, you know, but after four, after six years of doing this, I'm able to do some things. So we both have a lot of knowledge about how to build. A small business together. So one of the things that we do is we really help you to gain clarity, insight into building your brand, increasing your visibility, and developing a strong foundation for business starting, growing, but ultimately Anna and I want you to have a sustainable business that will take you into the future 
we strongly believe that what we're teaching is not any fly by the night, flash in the pan, shiny object of business building. It is solid business building because we really believe that it's important for you to know yourself and to be aligned with your values as you begin to um, uh, build your business. So we do, I, so if you think about this, Anna is, I'm more of the first half of this coaching program and Anna's more about the second half. So I do a lot of work with people around clarity. I, I help you clarify your values, your mission. I help you identify your true calling and purpose in life. You know, it's a lot of the same skills that I have used with people coming out later in life where I help them to be comfortable with this new identity that is forming for them. And being a business owner is a new identity. And I really help you get super clear about who you want to serve and who your ideal customer is. You know, caregiving professionals um, often have a lot of skills that can be transferable, like I just mentioned, you know, with transferring what I did for Lotus Group Coaching into Purposeful Empowerment that can be transferable. And we have these huge hearts where we want to help everybody. <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's it, it's impossible to help every uh, everybody, first of all. But honestly, when you don't have a clear message about who your customer is and who you want to serve, then what ends up happening is your, your ideal customer doesn't know you want to serve them and doesn't know you're the person for them. Anna, can you talk a little bit about branding? Yeah, so inside of the, your branding, we're going to help you get some of your messaging clear. We're going to help you get your offer clear. We're going to make sure you know how to have that sales conversation and you know what you're actually going to be sharing with other people. Um, when you have an idea of what you're going to do, that's great. But we want to get it to something solid. Because if you hopped on a phone call with someone and you tried to sell what you offer today, how well would that go? If it's not going that well, we definitely want to make sure that you have that set because it's important for your vision and what you're dreaming about to exist in reality. And that might be you got to do some work with Anne Marie on having confidence to share and having confidence to be visible, right? But we're going to make sure that you get that clear, your offer clear. We're going to make sure that we look at your existing website. If you have an existing website, what's not working, what what's what needs to be put in place so that it can convert or it can get people to sign up and say, hey, I'm interested. We're going to look at um, if you haven't got a website that you love, we can absolutely work with you to build a website to make sure it reflects and it helps you be that authority. OK, so we've got a few different options if you look. Uh, down further on the page where mm -hmm. you can add that website too. Okay. But we're also going to really look at um, making sure that you know how to have that confidence so that you can start making a difference so that you can sell. And I know that the work you do with Amory is that foundational work. So you can be really clear. What's the direction that I'm going and mm -hmm. how do we develop this so that you can actually turn it around and you can grow your business. You can actually make some sales. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, the, the thing is, is that Anna and I, I think one of our skills is that we really like working with people and we really like that one-on-one -on -one connection that we get with working with folks. And, you know, having somebody you can go to that knows your business, you don't have to explain everything every single time. It really is incredibly helpful. And so we start off with a 40 minute clarity call with me um, to define your goals and your objectives. And also it's actually an opportunity for us to really get to know each other. Um, I come from a background of caregiving with chaplaincy and bereavement counseling and coming out coaching. So I'm really curious about what makes you tick. So we will spend the first night, our first 90 minute call getting to know each other and I will be able to help you get a little bit more clarity about where you, what you want to do with your business and um, what your goals and objectives are. 
Um, and then after that, we get a weekly 30 minute, minute call with me to keep you on track and motivated, keep you moving forward as you go through the process of gaining clarity, becoming comfortable with visibility, um, uh, branding, and as well as whatever we end up doing with your website. And also too, with your offer and um, with valuing your work worth. You'll notice in this five-day workshop, we don't talk about valuing your worth separately because that is really included in every aspect of this um, foundation. And so we work on that in every aspect of the, of the foundation of building your business. And then I'm also offering something which is a monthly solopreneur group. I have other people that I'm working with. So you'll have an opportunity to really have a focus-based mutual support group with other solopreneurs and get the support and more emotional guidance in all aspects of your business. And then once we get you super clear and also becoming more comfortable with visibility, and becoming more comfortable with valuing your worth, Anna Empey's expertise takes over. So Anna, can you talk a little bit about that? So we will meet two times and we're going to really make sure we've got your brand identity set and solid. Um, there is some assignments and some work you'll have to do. Um, we do have, you know, down at the bottom, it talks about we've got an online classroom with some training. I make the trainings fun and they're actually not that long so that you know exactly what you need to do. And then we're going to collaborate and create together on our calls. Okay. So we've got two 45 minute branding calls and then we've got two 45 minute offer calls where we make sure you're clear what your offer is. And I'm even going to help you write your first social media post so that you can go and share that on your social media inside the second call. Okay. Then we also have a one minute 45 website consultation. So if you already have a website, then we're going to review your website audit and we'll give you those suggestions. If you don't have a website, then we're going to talk about what it looks like to create one if you want to go down that path and why you want to do that. Okay. The goal is if you, uh, if you do work with us, uh, if you do work with me and my team here, uh, we are offering as part of the purposeful empowerment 20 percent off of all of our services okay so if you do already have an existing website and you need some seo support or some content restructuring we can look at all that really it's up to you and what you want to create okay and then uh we do have that online portal we've thrown in a bonus so we've got a blogging training in there that one is a little bit more uh in depth it really is in depth it's going to teach you everything you need to know so you can turn into an amazing blogging machine. By machine, I mean someone who authentically shares what you're up to and it's easy for you, right? Um, and then Anne-Marie is available uh, to support you. During the working hours. So, you know, we put some pricing that is very realistic next to um, when we went through what you'll be getting up there and what, what we offer. And really, um, all of this would cost um, over $17,000 without a website build. But we were able to offer this for you for $5,997 or three installments of $19.99. And what is phenomenal, if you had a website built with all of the stuff that we are offering, and the, the cost would be over 22000 But we are really, really, you know, looked at our numbers. And because we really want to support LGBTQ entrepreneurs and allies for the community, and we really want to help other people who want to help other people <laughs> build their businesses, that we're able to offer it for $8,496 or three installments of $2,832. And if you decide to pay in full, um, we have some great bonuses with you. So both Anna and I have social media filings and email lists. So we will give you a visibility branding endorsement with both Anna and I. Um, and then I would like to thank you by giving you a guest spot on coming out and beyond and talking a little bit about your queer journey through life and then also talk about your business and what you offer to the world. Um, I have about 5,000 downloads every month. And um, so that will expose you to a lot of people who have an opportunity to hear about you and what you're offering. And then 
if you're somebody who wants to go into the group coaching or mutual support group support group realm, um, my expertise is in running small groups. I have been um, doing that since 1998. And that can tell you how old I am. <laughs> but for uh, 25 years, I've been doing running small groups and. And so I really know how to do that. And for the last six years, I've been doing them online. So if you're somebody who wants to start either a mutual support program or a group coaching program, I will be able to do a group audit, which means basically I will come to you with you for your first two meetings and um, and and give you my feedback, give you some ideas. We will really get you prepared so you'll feel comfortable running those groups and so that those uh, pay in full bonuses are super, super valuable. So I would like to share with you as you go down the page, you can see what people have said about my coaching previously, as well as my podcast, Career Business Success. I would really highly recommend that you take a look at, take a listen to that podcast because it can give you a lot of great ideas and a lot of great thoughts about owning your own business. So Anna and I would love to work with you and we would love, please reach out to us whether if you have any questions. Um, if you have anything that you're thinking about or you would like to have uh, an appointment, we would love to have you and love to talk to you. Anything else, Anna? <laughs> I would just say um, uh, we are going to put the link for this page into the chat so that you can see that um, you can get the details. Please join us. Honestly, you know, Anne-Marie and I decided to collaborate because it was just like, how can we make a bigger difference together? Mm -hmm. um, and really, mm -hmm. I'm excited about this program. The people who have gone through this program already have been loving the difference that it's making and it's been helping them step into who they are and what they're up to in some pretty powerful new ways. Um, for me, I understood for a long time how important it was to have support. And I knew that as a person, but until I had my own business, I did not recognize how important it was that I had support to help me be confident in my business. And when I have invested in that for myself, that is when I have accelerated my ability to make a difference. It's honestly why I'm here to have the confidence to make this offer with Anne Marie, because I know that what I'm up to can make a difference. Um, and I love helping other people who want to make a difference. And I know Anne-Marie does as well. So really would love to work with you. If you have any questions for us or you need any clarification, just let us know. Happy to answer any questions. And really, thank you for the difference you make. Thank you for being part of this challenge. And um, really, just, just remember that if you can dream it and you have the guts to do it, you can do it. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope we see you soon.